Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to the RS Clips. That is the image of Sikhi for a lot of people all over the world. I won't just say Indians. Oh, it's global image, yes. Um, for an eleven-year-old watching this show, how would you explain its significance? Great. This is. Firstly, I'm going to take out the word golden. In the Guru period of the ten Gurus, it was never golden. Maharaja Ranjit Singh made it golden. So you know the glitter part was never part of the Sikh tradition. It became when they became rulers. Mm. Ranjit Singh was a Maharaja of Punjab, right? Which has its own right. It's a great story. But in the Guru period, it was never golden. It is architecture is very very important. Four doors, which means open to all four people from all four corners. Doesn't matter which caste, which background, which religion, and anyone who comes he has to walk down. There is only way to enter a shrine is being humble. Going down is that, and doesn't matter which entrance you came in from. There is only way one way to go to divinity. So surrounding the pool, the the sarovar as we call it, there is only one pathway which goes to. हरि मंदर साहब हरि मंदर हरि इन इंडिक ट्रेडिशन इंक्लूडिंग इन सिख ट्रेडिशन इज द वर्ल्ड विच इज हरि कैन मीन ऑल प्रोवेसिव आई एम गो टू एटमोलॉजी नाउ शो हरि मीन्स ऑल प्रोवेसिव हरि इज नॉट जस्ट अ विष्णुज अवतार दैट्स द नेम मेनी लाइक माई नेम इज हरि इन दैट डजेंट मीन आई एम वट इज द वर्ल्ड मीन इट्स द मोस्ट ऑफ्ट रिपीटेड वर्ल्ड इन गुरु ग्रंथ साहेब दैट्स वाई इट्स कॉल हरि मंदर anything which is physical will be something less so what is the idea first right it's a building at the end of the day but what's the idea behind the building so when you see it idea behind the building is here is one manifestation of all pervasive force that's what hari means hari also means the one who eliminates your fear so if you want to eliminate fear let's read what's housed in this building right which is what i talked about earlier hari so hari is something green something which grows you something which blossoms and our ideas for that are housed here in this building in harmandar sahab complex that's what should be coming out right now it's become a selfie thing which i get it because of the glitter and everyone respected it that's why even when they tortured guru arjan to death they dare not attack it or dare not say it take out guru granth sahab because it is includes elements of uh baba farid who comes from islamic tradition and this is this is very disruptive Just let me put it blanketly where people understand it has shabads of brahman it also has shabads of butcher think about that for a second this is how disruptive it was people didn't know how to deal because they're like it doesn't matter what your background is if you have experience ikko ankar the one then we must learn from them doesn't matter what they wear doesn't matter what they eat doesn't matter what religion they come from doesn't matter what language is utilized by them it's the experience we identify because that experience is so intimate so personal so divine that's guru granth sahib house in harbandar sahib complex okay and for people who've not been there would you like to relay something about what you experience there well it's it's emotional experience for most people who visit there um doesn't matter what background they are for many it's a historical thing because the history of that complex is very unique not just the construction and what i just talked about the idea but throughout history it's been destroyed many times as well um and it's rebuilt many times as well in fact there is a sikh author from delhi you know who's died now sardar patwan singh i'm going to quote him he he did a book on golden temple with raghu rai a celebrated photographer of india so i'm just giving that reference if people want to check it out and he has written this phrase here about what this place is and the phrase he used is it took the blood and sweat of many generations to build it to defend it and to rebuild it it is not a sacred place for us we don't have a sikhi doesn't have an idea of sacred space we believe every place is sacred it's a historical place where we gather and we learn that vision and implement that vision so when you look at that visual sometimes you don't know what to do politically speaking that's what this place is it's that complex which has multiple gurdwaras actually 
you know, you've probably seen there are a couple of long watchtowers. There used to be hundreds of them until the early 20th century. Because everyone, every group thought, the sick groups included, we should play our role to protect this area. It's that good. Yeah, they were called bungas, the watchtowers. Not of the government, not of the six, of people from various biraderies or groups who said, we want to play a role in protecting. It's so good. The wisdom in there. Um, yeah, I think the context I gained is that it's a historical symbol. Uh, it? Not symbol. Symbols are transferable. So I have to be careful with the words. You can say, draw it on a piece of paper, put it in your pocket. That's a symbol. It's a manifestation of that idea, which is living reality. This is why, you know, there was a move to make the Golden Temple complex a UNESCO site. Many Sikhs who understand this vehemently opposed it. UNESCO sites are not lived realities. They're in the past. They're being just protected. This is a lived functional space. Mm. It must be understood as such. It is part of the Sikh DNA that don't tell us what to do with it. We have never listened to anyone who's told us. None of the gurus did. This is our space. We will do what we need to do here. What do you mean never listen to anyone who has told you? Why, why would someone tell the Sikhs? <laughs> anyone who, including, look, um, because Sikhs DNA, I said, is like a spiritual political DNA. Mm. And spiritual and political leaders always want to be controlling whether they look like six or whether they don't look like six. Okay, so okay. they want to control the thought process which is emanated from there. Mm, because it's opposition for them technically. That's right. Like in the British period, uh, people don't know, like, you know, the, the Sikh activism in early 20th century was even the Gurdwaras were run by British. Okay. Yes. They assigned managers at each Gurdwara because they knew, the, including their Warsaw complex, Golden Temple complex. This is going to shock you. They had their own Jathedar who actually brought General Dwyer, the guy who gave orders for Jallianwala attack and gave him Saropa, which means acknowledged him, yeah? recognized him. Can you imagine that? Because it was appointed by the British. So six decided in early 20th century, we're going to free our Gurdwaras. This will be your test run on how to free South Asia. And they did. They got ground Golden Temple Complex back. They got Nankana Sa, where Guru Nanak was born back. And once they freed enough Gurdwaras, it's actually called Gurdwara uh, Reform Movement, which means taking the Gurdwaras back into Sikh control instead of a government control. Uh, that's when Gandhi, you know, that thing which you may not know, he went to Nankana Sa and he sent a telegram. The first battle of Indian independence has been won because no native anywhere in South Asia was able to free their places. Then came the political movement from Punjab. If you look at the statistics of Indian independence, uh, people who died, people who sent to life imprisonment, Kala Pani Kisaja, as they call it, people who were hanged, 60% hanged or six, 2% of the population. This is the DNA. 80% of the people sent to life imprisonment, Andoma, Nicobar or Singapore, six. So this is where political activism is born from Shabal. You can paint whatever picture you want. We are listening to our ideology from the Guru, which believes in freeing things. So, so first they freed the Gurdwaras. Then they worked towards, so whether you were Bhagat Singhs of the time, whether you were Randhir Singhs of the time, and Bhagat Singh otherwise said, I'm an atheist. But you know, if you read his articles, he says, everything I've learned is from a grandfather. And these Babbar Akalis, who are fighting right now and hanged by the British, it is according to, because of what they have done. And it was during Holi, so let me invoke it. You know, Holi is coming, right, right now? On the Holy Day, Bhagat Singh wrote this editorial in the Hindi paper. If India ever becomes free, it will be because what Babbar Akalis are doing in Punjab fighting the British, and he writes that editorial. So this is, what I'm saying is early 20th century. This is not far distant. We don't even tell these narratives right now. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this. It's the artist clips.